So guys, we got a 2005 Saturn Ion here. The guy had taken it to Pet Boys because the clutch pedal went to the floor. And he had them put a new clutch kit in. And then when he went to pick it up, it wouldn't start. And they said it's because the timing chain jumped. And he was mad because it ran when it went there. So we're gonna try cranking this, see what happens. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it definitely sounds like low compression. On some of the cylinders. So, I guess we'll get out the scope. Hopefully the storm holds off. I tried to make this video earlier and it started downpouring right away as soon as as soon as I sat in the car so I didn't go any further than that uh, let's see where's the hood prop there we go let's see let's see how quick we can do this should be a 2.2 ecotech Actually, I guess the, called the 20. I think this is this might no, this is the 2.2. I wasn't sure if it was the 2200, but yeah, not. 2005 is the 2.2 liter. So, I guess what we'll do is we'll do a relative compression first. I guess we can sink it off. Uh, Ignition coil module. The only issue is it's going to fire twice because this module, I believe, one's cylinder one and three, and the other one's two and four. But I guess that really won't matter. At least we'll get an idea of what cylinders are firing. Okay, let me get my scope out. I'll quick hook this up. So, guys, I got my amp clamp down there in the starter wire, which is real easy to get to on here. I'm probing. That wire. Not sure if that's the right wire or not. But well, one of them is going to give us our pulse. Uh, let's see. I believe the white and... Is it the white and black? Is... It's either the white and black or the brown and black as a tack signal. But most people don't know this, I'm sure. But these engines only have a crank sensor. It has uh, like a synthetic artificial cam sensor, which is done by a compression sense. Uh, I guess like logic that's done with the ignition coil module, and that's how it generates a cam signal. Uh, I must accidentally click print, but we're gonna crank this. See what we get. Normally, a car like this, I'd usually just uh, pull the spark plugs out since it's really easy and just go in there and make sure there's no bent valves, but we'll do it the scientific way. Oh, my amp clamp's upside down. But I don't know if you guys can see that. There is two separate humps there, it looks like. Especially when we're zoomed out, like there, 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 there. So you can see our firing event. One, two, three, four. Like I said, it would be firing every other one. Let's let's flip this. Inverted. You know what I'll do? I'll zoom in more. We'll go down to a hundred millisecond. Let's see what happens here. I think that said low coolant on the screen. Let's see. Yep, 
Yeah, there's definitely an issue with two of them. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Actually, yeah, look, we got pretty much like three. And then it drops down to two. And then three. So I guess what we can do is we can probably put a pulse sensor in the intake. Should be able to do one on this because it has a brake booster. Should be able to do it pretty easily. Guess we'll hook up a pulse sensor. And we'll check our intake pulses. Let's check our coolant level. Our coolant level's full. Let's see what it looks like. I didn't check anything on this car yet. I don't understand why they put a new clutch in here. They put a new master. I guess they reused the old clutch line. They put a new slave. All this stuff on a car that doesn't start. Unless they caused it. Uh, let's check our oil. Oil doesn't look milky. I don't know if you guys can see that. It doesn't look milky, so. It's probably just a jump chain. I wonder if this has the original tensioner. It does have the original tensioner. Let's see if I can show you guys this. This is kind of important to know. Uh, let's see. I built quite a few of these engines. Uh, come on. Okay, there. See the tensioner? It's completely flat on the top. Mm -hmm. This spot right here will have a big dome on it. If it's a new style, Jim revised this tensioner like three or four times. The new style is the dome. Uh, the new style has a special clip inside, so it can't fly apart. Like it will literally uh, separate in half. And then the piece goes down inside the engine. It's not good. It's not pretty. So this is the old style. The first and second style both were flat. And that's probably original because it's all rusty. Usually they're not rusty. And then the new style is a big dome. You can definitely tell the difference. And some of the aftermarket kits still sell that old style. But let me get my pulse sensor out. I'll have to take it out because it's in the back of my truck. And then we'll put the pulse sensor on and see what happens from there. So guys, I'm going to try to upload the wiring diagram in this video. But I believe the wiring color is wrong here. And I believe this is 1 and 4 that we're looking at. Um, let's see. Let me save this. Two thousand five. I should do relative. Relative compression. One and four sink. You always got to save it to something that you'll never remember. Okay, so I got my pulse sensor hooked up right there. It goes right down to where the brake boosts were connect. I disconnected it. Uh, another thing that we could do is we could. Uh, Disconnect the uh, ignition coil, I mean not the ignition, uh, 
the injectors the nice thing about these engines every single one of them has this one connector right here and this thing controls the injectors like the map sensor and I think that's it I'm gonna set this down real quick and unplug it Okay, that connector was not plugged in right. Wasn't plugged in all the way. But that still doesn't. Oh, it's getting a little windy. We may have to stop here. Let me pause this and put away my canopy before it blows away. Okay, we're back. Let's turn these on. Converted. I don't know what we'll need here. Might need 10. Who knows? Hopefully the storm doesn't get any worse. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's quick stop this and see what we saw. Just gonna zoom out. There we go. Why didn't we see anything with the pulse sensor? Our compression changed. Let's see. Yeah, look at our compression now. We have, looks like three that are good. Well, not good, but more even. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, there's one, there's a low, then one that's slightly higher, one that's higher than that. Yeah, one that's the highest. I don't know why our pulse sensor didn't read anything. Let me move this pulse sensor around and see if it changes anything. So guys, we had to get a little creative. So, I got my bladder in there. Put a screwdriver in here to plug it. And then I use a pair of vice grips to crimp off the PCV line. Now we're going to crank it because now if it creates any vacuum, then it's going to. Since we can't really stop the throttle body from opening any since it's electronic. I also notice this is really low on fuel. Let's see if we. Oh, I didn't press record. Try this again. Should just run my extended cable over. This chain must be really loose or something because it seems like the pitch change to the engine cranking. Let's see. Still nothing on the pole sensor. I wonder if my I wonder if this lead's bad. Let me see if I have another lead. I always have issues with these. Oh, you know what? There's the issue. There's somebody would make some really, really good ones. I'm gonna fix this quick. 
leaves a little set screw in there. Probably can't even see it, but there's a little set screw down in there that holds these in. And it always pulls them out. I even tried soldering the wire on. Nothing seems to work. So in case any of you guys are wondering how these work, the wire comes in through the side, and then there's usually a little set screw that goes down in there. But the set screw must have fell out. So I'm gonna put these in, put this in here. And we'll put the wire through. And I guess I'll just put an alligator clamp on because I don't have another set of leads around here. Set this down quick. Hopefully soon, thanks to a friend, I won't have to deal with BNC connectors soon. But there we go, got the alligator clamp holding it. That should be good. It's starting to rain. Let's uh, see if we can get this cranking. Okay guys, I think it's my fault it wasn't working. I think this ground wires were touching the end here and it was shorting out the sensor. So we'll try this again. It should. Get a good reading this time. Let's see. Hopefully this will hold off the rain. Let's see. There we go. Oh my god, look at that spike. Our intake pulses are pretty consistent. Let's see this. Let's see, uh, pulse intake capped. Let's try it without the intake being capped. On record, I'll try this again. Oh. Okay, we're gonna have to zoom out. We got way too much voltage. Let's go to 20 volts. Do this again. There we go. You can see the differences in the intake pulls. They're not even. They should be even. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we could do. Already rolled out like a compression issue. Well, not like a compression issue, but uh, uh let's see. I guess the only thing we can do is like go in cylinder with a pressure transducer. Could get an exhaust waveform capture. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess we'll just go in solder. See what we get from there. We can check valve timing from there for the chart, I guess. So guys, I got everything still set up the same. Pulse sensor still hooked up. Pressure transducer. Got it calibrated. We'll crank this. And then hopefully it's a good enough capture. You may even see right away. A valve timing issue. If not, we might have to compare it to a cart. To a chart. But pretty sure it'll probably be pretty obvious. Oh yeah, definitely see it. There is a... Uh, there's no intake pool. Like we should be seeing... Actually I'm wrong, I'm wrong because it's cranking so we won't see an intake pool. But look at our compression. Our compression goes up and down. So guys, I had to stop recording earlier today because somebody came out to talk with me and then uh, it started to rain so I quick hurried up to get some captures. But here is the capture we first took with uh, the relative compression and the sink on 1 and 4 ignition coil control. You can see here, looks like there's a fourth hump here. I don't know how close that is to the other one. looks a little lower, but you can see there's four humps. And here we lose, like one's low, got three good humps. Then we got two low, two good, one bad, three humps. This one looks a little low. Then one bad, three humps. The middle one looks better than the outside ones. One low. It's a weird pattern. So then, just going back and look at them, I don't know how I didn't notice this before. Uh, let's see, this one. So this was cylinder one that we took first. And if you look, we have it drop out. Like it loses compression here. It goes down to like, I think these were, uh, oh, what were these? I forget what, how high this went. like 136 there you can zoom in a little bit 141 Let's zoom in yeah I don't understand why this does this like when you zoom out you get a higher rating than when you zoom in see 131 on that one let's see if we zoom out if this will change Oh, you know what? I think these are lower than the first ones. You got 142 right there. This may be from the injectors, because I didn't have the injectors unplugged first. Yeah, so we had... It's like 141 right there. Yeah, 141. Move over to this one. So it went down to 68. So we lost half the compression right there. I'll zoom back out. Zoom in just one more. And then you'll see. 
so we have that one there. Let's zoom back out. So we have one low one. Then these were all good. Then another low one. Good one. Low one. Then it dropped down a little bit, not as much. And then a good one. Keep going. Okay, that's it. So it was like every other one here was good. And my pulse sensor wasn't. The wire was messed up, so that's why that wasn't reading. So then let's go to... Oops. Cylinder 2. Cylinder 2 was good. I believe this was 120 PSI for these. I looked at it earlier. And there wasn't really any changes there. So then we'll go to Cylinder 3. Cylinder 3 is when I got my pressure, I mean, yeah, um, not my pressure transducer, my pulse sensor working. So here's Cylinder 3. So cylinder three, you can see uh, all the compression humps are pretty good, and the pulse sensor it's a lot more even here. Let's sync these up. Pulse sensors a lot more even with the pulls. So, the intake pull on here is going to be probably that one, I believe, is for the cylinder. So, you can see there, this one's not as good. And this one's not as good, I believe, like almost every time. This, this one, which is probably cylinder one. It's always after this compression peak. And if we go down here, it gets worse. So there's definitely a problem with that one cylinder. And then, oh, why did I bring that up again? Let's go to cylinder. So this is cylinder 4, right here, we'll zoom out. You'll see this one's a lot more steady, like it seems like the more I crank the car the more steady it gets. And these were, I believe 125 PSI. It seems like 2, 3, and 4 were around 125 PSI on average. So they're still low, and I don't think, I don't know if that's low enough for the car not to start. I believe GM spec usually anything lower than 150 PSI is bad. But if these cylinders are washed out from cranking, they may be low. Maybe I'll just add some oil and see. It'll get better. But see, this, this pole sensor, they're pretty... They're a lot more even now. See, now I just dropped them down so you can see this, like... It's, it's like a very intermittent valve train issue. See, so you see some changes in the pulse sensor. I don't know how much of a different, or like how like how bad a cylinder has to be with the pulse sensor to cause an issue where it won't start. I think tomorrow I might just check spark and inject a pulse because I didn't check that and see if the car will actually start. But since I heard a mechanical issue I wanted to check that first. See and if I wouldn't have took that capture uh, we would have probably... See, so yeah, if I want to take that capture, 
we would have probably never saw that issue with the compression. Now this one, this waveform I took after the other one, so I had did one, two, three, four in order. I went back to one, and now the compression was always at 75 psi for this whole thing. Like it's super low, and look at the pole sensor; it's all over the place on this one. So let's see. So our intake pool should be like right around there. So now it's crazy how much it changed. Like I've never compared these, so I could be wrong. But if that's our intake pool, it looks like the other valve. I don't know which one. I don't know the firing order. I didn't look that up yet. But something weird is going on here. Bring this over. We'll use this one as the pointer. So yeah, whichever valve that is right there is not making as big of a pool. So I guess I'll think about this tonight. Maybe we'll, I'll come up with something else.